event. My name is Sonia Stringer. We are broadcasting to you live from San Diego, California, with a very enthusiastic studio audience. Say hello, everybody. <laughs> are, we, are we having fun? Are you having a good time? Yes, great. Well, you've been amazing. We've had a phenomenal first couple of sessions. If you're just joining us, you're just in time. We are about to start session number three. And the title of this is The Magic Words to Selling and Sponsoring. How to invite and share your business opportunity so people get excited to join your team. Now, if you're like many of the women that I've worked with in network marketing and direct sales, I am positive that you love your products, you love your company, you love the idea of having a home-based business. However, you may find that when you share your business with other people, they may not necessarily get it. They may not see it the way that you do. And I know that can be incredibly frustrating, am I right? When people yes. are quick to dismiss what you do as some kind of hobby or pyramid thing, or they just won't even take the time to take a second look, yes? Well, if that is happening to any of you, I want you to know, first, it's a very common challenge. You're not alone. Any of you. I want you to know, first, it's a very common challenge. You're not alone. And secondly, it's probably not because of what you're doing. It's likely because of what you're saying. And many professionals in this place, many network marketing and direct selling professionals, have never really been taught a way to invite that helps people really see the value in your opportunity so that they're at least open enough to take a second look. So, we're going to tee the session off with a very short video that I put together and share with you an approach that I teach called the magic words to sponsoring. And for those of you here in the studio audience, you'll have a chance to watch this as well. Take notes. There's going to be a quiz afterwards. Um, so we're going to take just 20 minutes to go through that video. I encourage those of you at home watching to also take notes. And then we're going to come back and I've got a panel of guests that will be joining me and we'll talk more about how to apply these ideas into your own business. So Randy, if we could roll that video, we'll be right back. Here's the magic words to selling and sponsoring. Hello, everybody. It's Sonia Stringer. Welcome to all of you taking part in the Recruiting Workshop for Women livecast training event. It's been wonderful to have you here today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you are just joining us, perfect timing because we're about to jump into session number three, how to invite and share your business opportunity so that people get excited to join your team. And in our last session, we talked at length about lead generation, the various ways that women are finding people who are perfect for their business opportunity. We spoke at length about warm market prospecting, which is smart, approaching your friends and family, the people that you already know, to see if they may be interested to take a look at your business. Cold market prospecting, we have opportunities every day through our natural everyday activities to meet new people and turn those strangers into new friends and potential new business partners. We also heard from Michelle and Heidi, two examples of smart women who are using personal branding and hosting their own groups that are naturally attracting to them the kinds of prospects that they're looking for. And of course, the internet is an incredible tool. Using social media sites like Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, many of you are already doing that to connect with people in your own backyard and around the world and creating a really fabulous network of potential business builders. So then the natural next step is, okay, Sonia, I've got these contacts and these great leads, but what do I actually say to people when I invite them to check out my business opportunity? And for some of you, this is maybe where your business is getting stalled a bit. You might send a message, let's say through Facebook to someone asking them to take a quick look at your video presentation or get back to you so you can share more details about your business. And those messages are largely getting ignored or you might get a very curt, no thank you kind of response. Or perhaps when you call someone and ask them to meet with you and hear more about your business presentation, the same thing's happening. You're getting a lot of no's or people just not being very interested. And if this is happening, please know, first and foremost, you're not alone. This is perhaps the most common challenge everybody goes through when trying to grow a team. And secondly, there's something I really want you to understand that if you're hearing no a lot when you're inviting people, chances are it's not because of what you're doing. It's because of what you're saying. And it's not really your fault. I've observed this over many years of training thousands of people in network marketing and direct selling companies. You know, the truth is that many people have just never been taught a way to invite or to share their business opportunity in a way that makes it very clear and easy for other people to see the value so that they're excited to say yes. 
And the good news is that there's a very simple approach you can learn. We're going to cover it right here. It's called the magic words to selling and sponsoring. This is a very simple language technique or way to share your business with others so that when you do invite them, you hear yes a lot more often. It really does work like magic. And I can vouch for this because it's something that I've shared with thousands of people now across many different network marketing and direct selling companies. And I see when people use this that immediately they feel so much more confident and inspired. They're out talking to many more people because they know exactly what to say. And we've tracked this and I've seen people go through this program and learn this approach and their sales have increased anywhere from 25 to 60%. And on average, they're out there recruiting two to six new business builders within a month of learning these skills. So I only share that because I truly want to encourage you, don't just learn this today, but please take it into your business and test it out for yourself. I am confident if you do, you'll find that people respond very differently to you and you will be hearing yes a lot more often. So real quick, here's what we're gonna cover in this session. I'd like to take you through the three most common mistakes that everybody makes when inviting or sharing your business with other people. And as we go through this, I think you'll finally understand why so many people have been saying no to you and why recruiting can feel like such a challenge for yourself or the people on your team. And then we're going to look at what works instead. So three very specific changes that you can make when you communicate about your business. And when you do this, it makes a big difference in the value that other people see. And you'll find that you hear yes a lot more often. And that's what I want for you is to be able to take this away and use it so that when you do message somebody on Facebook or LinkedIn, you actually get a positive response to those messages. And that can lead to you recruiting many new business partners. And you can use these phrases or magic words when you're networking live as well. If you've got an event coming up, you can share these ideas and you may find that people actually perk up, pay attention. They ask you for more information about your business. And that can also lead to many more people joining your team. So one thing, be sure you've got something to take notes because we're going to go through some very specific examples and phrases here that I want you to write down. And if you have questions at all, go ahead and post those in the chat box. It's right there on your screen and we'll see where we end up. We may have some time at the end of the session where I can go through and answer those for you live. Okay, so let's look at common mistake number one. And this is a mistake everybody makes when inviting or sharing the business opportunity with other people. And what it involves, without realizing it, you may be talking a lot about the business opportunity. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, Sonia, I'm supposed to talk about the business opportunity. And yes, that's true. But without realizing it, you may be sharing a lot of information about your business with other people. And it's very tempting when you have a business like yours and a company like yours. It's pretty exciting. You may want to share a lot of detail about that. You might talk about the history of the company and how long it's been in business. You might want to share information about the leadership, the backgrounds of the people involved, or you may want to illustrate the comp plan and talk a lot about how that's better than another comp plan. Or just in general, you might describe this business in a way that focuses on a lot of detail. And that's a common tendency. We try to dazzle people with details, hoping that by doing so, we'll impress them enough to take a second look. And what happens when you use this kind of verbiage, and I'm going to exaggerate it here, of course, but I've seen examples like this, I'm sure you have too, where people will approach someone and say something like this. Hey, I'm with a cutting edge health and wellness company that's got a 10 year track record. It's operating in 10 countries around the world. And we have scientifically proven weight loss products with bionic ingredients and a ground floor marketing opportunity, yada, yada, yada. Check out my short presentation here. And again, there's nothing necessarily wrong with this. It's just not that effective because anybody reading this or listening to it doesn't necessarily see how this business can help them. It's focused on information and detail. And the response that you'll often get is something like this. You know, they're asking themselves, well, so what? Why should I care? What does this mean to me? What you want to do instead, this is a very simple shift, but it makes a big difference in how people hear you. Rather than just talk about the business and share a lot of detail or information, instead, talk about how the business opportunity can help people. What can your business do for people? That's what they're listening for. That's what's really important. And if you can stress the benefits that people experience or the results that they can create in their life through a business like yours, you'll get their attention. In fact, you want to focus on benefits at least 80% of the time 
and information or details maybe 20% of the time. So don't get me wrong, that information is important. It's just not compelling. It's not the reason someone really joins your team. They're joining because they want a result. They want the benefits that your business can provide them or their families. And if you can focus and communicate that more clearly, you'll find that people respond very differently. So what would that sound like? Well, instead of reaching out to someone and saying something, you know, I've got this great business opportunity and you give them a big pitch and you give them, you know, way too much information or detail, Instead, keep your messaging really simple and stress how the business can help them. These are very simple examples, but you could say something like, my business can help you save money on your taxes. Most people have no idea how much money they can save on taxes every year just by operating a small home-based business. Or my business can help you not have to worry about being laid off from your job. My business can help you retire early and spend more time on the golf course. My business can help you spend more time with your kids or be able to take longer vacations and travel the world. You know, there's a lot of simple benefits or results that you could connect to your business. And when you give it this way, when you explain it, people start to see it very differently. Here's another quick example. Instead of saying to someone, hey, do you keep your income options open or, you know, you'd be so great at this business, you should really check it out. That kind of inviting isn't really going to connect with people. But if you could help them see that, hey, I've got a business that could help you make full-time income working part-time hours, or I have a business that can help you spend quality time with your children, be a hands-on mom, be there for your kids during those years when it really counts. If you can communicate that clearly, they'll start to see your business opportunity from a whole new place. And so how you do that, this is a very simple formula, but grab your pen, let's write this down. This will get you started. It's as simple as this. Just writing out some phrases that you can start using. My business can help you blank. My business can help you get this benefit or get this kind of result. My business can help you quit a job that you really hate and do something that you love. My business can help you make full-time income working part-time hours so that you can travel the world and live your life fully. My business can help you do something with real meaning and make a contribution to other people. My business can help you spend more time with your kids and be a hands-on parent. I'm just making this up, but you get, if you can link a benefit or a result to your business as you're describing it, it just makes so much more sense to people. I've heard this described as sell the destination, not the airplane. And I love this example, it makes so much sense. Think about it, whenever you've booked a trip, you're concerned about where you're going. There's a destination that you're trying to get to. Whenever I've booked a trip, I want to get to Europe or Hawaii or somewhere fun and exciting. I'm not so concerned about the model of aircraft or how many seats it has or what color the upholstery is. Those are all facts and details that don't really mean as much to me as this is where I want to get. And that's really true for your prospects as well. They want to get somewhere. Um, they don't necessarily need all the information about your business opportunity, at least right now. If you want to get their attention, you've got to show them this business can take you from where you are to where you want to go. And if we can just stress the benefits or the results that someone can experience through your business, they'll see it more clearly and they'll respond more positively. So here's big takeaway number one if you want to jot this down. Rather than just talk about your business opportunity, be sure to talk about what your business can do for people. It's just that shift from information to benefits. You want to focus at least 80% of the time on benefits, 20% of the time on the details. And the truth is, if you don't do this, I can guarantee you will miss out on many recruiting opportunities. You'll find if you send a message through Facebook, people aren't going to respond as well as they could. If you're approaching someone that you've met at a networking event or you're calling someone on the phone, if you're not stressing the benefits clearly, they're not going to hear what's really in it for them. And if you work on just this one skill, if you practice this and get good, people can easily start to see how your business can help them. And they'll be much more willing to take a serious look and find out more information. All right, let's move on to common mistake number two. And this occurs when you're sharing your business with other people. You might actually be stressing the benefits of the business opportunity, but without realizing it, they might come across as a little too common or a little too boring. So what do I mean by that? Well, consider this for a moment. Imagine the number of commercials or advertisements we get exposed to every single day. If you added up all the TV commercials, radio commercials, print advertising, billboard advertising, Facebook ads, we're bombarded by media messages that make all kinds of promises and claims that sound the same. 
Imagine how many times in the course of a day you hear somebody say, this is the way for you to make more money or lose weight and get in great shape or have more free time in your life. And although these are effective messages because at least they're stressing benefits, they do start to blur together and we start to tune them out. So if you want to get someone's attention, if you're inviting them through Facebook or at a networking event or even connecting with someone on the phone, you want to fire it up. You want to use language that gets people's attention and gets them to respond to you. And one of the best ways to do that is to include feelings. Now this is important because when someone's considering checking out your business, they're making that decision from two places. We make decisions for logical reasons, has to make sense, and we also make decisions for emotional reasons. And when someone joins a business like yours, they definitely want the benefits or the results that come from having a home-based business. But in addition to that, they're actually motivated because they have a sense of how your business is going to make them feel. We're very feeling creatures and when we buy something or when we make a decision of some kind, we want that because of how we expect to feel. So if you want to be really effective when you're inviting, you want to talk about the experiences or the feelings that people want and that they can experience through a business like yours. So what would that sound like? Well, here's some very simple language. This is similar to where we started. You could talk to someone and say, you know, I've got a business that can help you make more money. That's a really straightforward benefit. But if we added some feeling language here, if we fired it up a little bit, we could say, I've got a business that can help you make more money so that you feel secure that you'll be able to retire comfortably. Can you hear the moment we do that, we connect an emotion to your business that's very attractive to people. It's more likely that they'll pay attention and positively respond if we can show them how this is also gonna help them feel. Here's another example. This business can help you be home with your kids. That's a great benefit. But what if we added something to it? If we added some feeling language, this business can help you be home with your kids so you never have to feel guilty for not being there when they need you the most. Now that kind of communication is way more explicit and way more enticing. And if you were to say that to a mom, you'd likely get her attention. She would perk up and pay attention and want to know more about your business opportunity. So how do you come up with your own phrases here? Well, let's use this next magic words formula. Grab your pen, jot this down. It's very similar to the one we started with. We're just gonna add a little bit to it this time. So my business can help you blank so you can blank. My business can help you get this benefit or this result that's important to you so you can get this bigger benefit or this feeling. And all you need to do is plug in the benefits or the feelings that would make sense for your prospects. So let's say you're speaking with a college student. You could say, gosh, I've got this great business. It's perfect for college students like you. It can help you pay off your student loans early so that you don't have to feel completely stressed trying to find a job and get yourself out of debt. Or maybe you're talking to a mom. You could just customize this a little bit and say, I've got a business that's perfect for moms like you who want to make full-time income working part-time hours so that you can take your families on great vacations and afford those luxuries that uh, you know really make a difference in your life. So you can customize this any way you want. The formula though helps you stress both the benefits and the feelings that are important to your prospects. Okay, so here's big takeaway number two from this session. I encourage you whenever you're inviting or sharing your business opportunity to also include feelings, to include feeling language. How do people get to feel when they build a business from home? How do people get to feel when they're able to create a secondary income? Do they experience a greater sense of security or freedom or happiness or joy in their life? Do they get to eliminate stress? If you include those feeling words, it really helps people connect to how your business can really help them. If you don't, people can tune your messages out, ignore them, they just don't respond the same way. But if you can use feeling words, you'll find people really get it. They can see clearly how your business can make a real difference for them. So they're much more likely to take a second look and many more of those people can join your team as well. All right, let's look at the last mistake, common mistake number three. Often if you're inviting people or you're sharing your business opportunity, you may be tempted to use the exact same language, the same invitation or the same kind of message with everyone. And if you're doing that, if your message is too generic, you may not be getting the response that you want. And the reason that happens is people actually join your team for very different reasons. So if you're using the same invitation for everyone, it may not be landing as well as it could. 
So think about this for a moment. If you're inviting a mom to come take a look at your business opportunity, you know, why would somebody like that be interested in having a home-based business? Well, there might be many reasons, but chances are she's someone who wants to make some money and also have more quality time with her kids. That's what would motivate someone like that to take a look at your opportunity. Now, on the other hand, if you're speaking with a baby boomer, someone who's getting ready to retire, chances are that person would take a look at your business if they believed that this might be a way for them to sock away some money for retirement. That's what would motivate that kind of prospect. If you're connecting with a college student, you know, a person like that might take a look at your business because they wanna pay off their student loans. Or a real estate agent might be interested in your business as a way to have steady income coming in when the real estate market is slow. So here's the million dollar tip, please write this down. The more customized that you can make your invitation, the more people will respond to it. The more customized your message, the more people will respond. And in order to customize our messages, what we need to do is discover WIT, W-I-T-T, -T, which stands for what's important to them. The more you understand your prospects or can at least guess what's important to them, the better you'll be able to customize your invitations so that they land really strongly. So let's say you're going to approach a working mom and invite her to come check out your business opportunity. What would be the common problems that a working mom would have? Well, chances are, if she's working long hours in the corporate world, she's missing time with her kids, or maybe she's having to put her kids in daycare every day and isn't too happy about that. She might be dealing with office politics, or she may be working really long hours and not making the kind of money that she would like to. So there might be a lot of stress involved in her job, or she feels she has no control over her hours or no time for herself or her family. So this is what's important to a working mom. These are the kinds of problems that she's dealing with every single day. Now let's flip it around. What would she want to have instead? What kind of benefits or results would be important to her? Well, chances are having more time with her family is really important, having more time for herself. Perhaps the idea of not having a boss would be really exciting or the ability to make more money, have more control over her schedule, or just to do work that made her feel like she was making a real difference in the world. Okay, so grab your pen one last time. Let's jot down this last magic words formula or phrase. And this is something you can use to create customized invitations that work really well for different kinds of prospects. It's really simple. It goes like this. My business helps blank to blank so they can blank. My business helps blank to blank so they can blank. My business helps this kind of person to get these specific benefits that we know are important to him or her so they can have this feeling experience. So how could you use this? Well, let's say you are talking to a working mom. You're gonna invite this person to come take a look at your business. Instead of using the old canned approach of, you know, hey, I represent a leading skincare business that has cutting edge ingredients. We're in all these countries, you should check us out. Or, you know, saying something like, wow, you'd be just really good at this business, you should check it out. You know, let's create an effective, customized invitation. And if we use that formula, we just plug in the benefits and the words that make sense for that person. So if we're talking to a working mom, we would say something like, hey, I've got a business that is perfect for working moms like you. It helps them make a great income working from home so they don't have to feel guilty for not being around when their kids need them the most. So you can see we're just highlighting the benefits and the feelings that are customized that make sense for that kind of prospect. And we can use that exact same formula and plug in different kinds of words and it works just as well. I have a business that helps baby boomers generate extra money for retirement so they can travel, spend time with the grandkids, and not have to worry about running out of money. So can you hear, when we customize the message, when we talk about the person that we're working with and the benefits that are important to that person and even the feelings that are important to that person, the chances of getting that person's attention and having a positive response to your invitation are very high. Okay, so to sum up everything we've learned in this session, it's really simple. The big takeaways I'd encourage you to write down and think about whenever you're approaching someone to invite them to take a look or when you're sitting down to share your business opportunity, just be sure that you stress the benefits. You want to be sure to help people see this is what this business can do for you. These are the kind of results or experiences that you can get by having a home-based business. And whenever you can stress the feelings that they can experience as well by having a home-based business. Tie your business into those feelings of security, of freedom, of joy, of contribution. That's what people really want. And if you can be very obvious and explicit about that, they'll pay attention and they'll see the real value that's present in your business opportunity. 
And last but not least, customize your message as much as you can. Just like in the examples I shared, you know, stress benefits and feelings, but if you can, really customize them to the person to whom you're speaking. A mom is gonna join your business for a slightly different reason than a baby boomer. A teacher is gonna join your business for a slightly different reason than a corporate executive. So with a little practice, you'll find that you can tune in to what's important to those particular kinds of people and customize your invitations a little bit so that they really speak directly to them. All right, so I hope that was helpful. I hope at this point you're feeling a little more inspired. You've got more confidence and belief that you can connect with prospects. You can send out invitations or connect with them live on the phone or at a networking event and be able to communicate the value of your business opportunity in a way that's very compelling. And that leads to a lot more people saying, yes, yes, I want to take a look. Yes, I want to join your team. And if you like this approach, if these ideas resonate with you and you'd like to learn more, then I'd love to invite you to join me and take part in the Heart Centered Sponsoring Skills Coaching Program that I'm gonna be offering in March. It's the last time I'm offering this program live, so I hope you can join me. And what we do in that program, we touch on skills like this. You'll learn not only specific ways to invite people so that they respond favorably, but you'll also learn how to lead a recruiting conversation, a very heartfelt, authentic, comfortable, and highly effective recruiting conversation that makes it completely obvious to people why they would want to join your team. And when you use this approach, it's very conversational. It puts people at ease. You'll find that you love doing it and you'll end up recruiting a lot more people in your business as a result. So I'll tell you more about that towards the end of the session, but just would love to extend that invitation if it resonates. All right, I hope you enjoyed this session. Now let's go back and join our panel and discuss this in more detail. All right, welcome back everybody. Sonia Stringer here. We are in the middle of session number three, which is all about inviting. And in particular, this approach that I've been sharing with everyone here in the audience, those of you at home, called Magic Words to Selling and Sponsoring. Is that interesting? Do you guys yeah. take notes? Yes? yes. There will be a test, so <laughs> pay attention. All right, well, I just wanted to take a moment to talk, because that was um, very instructional and theoretical, but to talk in terms of how do you really apply those ideas to your business? When you're sharing your business opportunity with other people, either live at a networking event, or if you're connecting with them through Facebook or on the phone, what do you say? How do you present the business opportunity so that someone is open enough to take a serious look at it? And Jackie, I thought we'd start with you, because I know you've taken the Magic Words program, so you are, you know, brilliant at this. I'm sure you were great at it way before you actually took that program, but how do you help someone see value in this opportunity so that they'll at least take a look and, and be open to the possibility of joining you? Okay. Well, I'm a huge, yeah, I'm a huge student of magic words and I use magic words every single day in my business. Um, and I also meet with people face to face or I'll talk with them on the phone or these are people in my local area that I'm just meeting. Yes. And I use these same types of approaches for, for all of them, uh, all the different platforms. I make it about them, number yes. one. Yes. I found out, find out what's going on in their life. If I don't know them yet, I actually kind of do a quick scan. Well, maybe they're around 30 years old, they have a few kids in the stroller, uh, they're driving a van, that's a hint. Um, yeah. you know. <laughs> I kind you of got look a band, you got kids. I profile, <laughs> I profile in a good way. Yeah. But what I'm doing is quickly just just kind of making an assessment. How am I going to approach this person? What might be their concerns or what might excite them? Yes. Well, I know a mom with kids isn't going to have time for herself. She's going to be stressed. She's probably not working, so they've got to watch the budget. So this is this is what I see and then I approach it in that way. So oh, yeah. I might talk to someone and she'll say, "Well, let's say, what do you do? And I'll say, well, I actually work from home and I have a cat on my lap most of the time and you know, I'm out on the patio getting some sun and uh, I, I work from home, make my own schedule and I help other people do the same thing, either full-time or part-time. Remember, she's the mom of the kids, so I'll say, in fact, I have a lot of young moms that work with me in my business and I help them work from home and make their own hours and they love it. Fantastic. Well, what does that do? That makes them very uh, curious about what I do. So I say irresistible things to yes. make them curious yes. to know more. Brilliant. I just want to reiterate a few things that you said because rather than just giving a canned spiel, 
I am with a company that does yada, 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 right? What you do really well, I can tell, is listen. You're listening to what people are sharing about themselves. You're looking and finding clues about who they are, what's important. And then obviously when you present your business, you're tying in that business to what's important to them. And obviously it's easier for that person then to see, oh, perhaps that's why I should actually take a look at this business then. I call yeah. it listening between the lines. Yes. It goes back to what you said, yes. what's in it for them. So yes. I cut to the chase and go right to that because then I get their attention. Brilliant. Thank you for sharing that. And Romy, I know you're so great at, I guess we call it lifestyle prospecting, where you're out and about with people and you're connecting, but I know you do something similar. Would you share that as well? Yeah. yeah. And I know it's called lifestyle prospecting, social marketing, but I just right. call it making new friends. Uh -huh. I mean, every day when I get up, I just think, okay, I'm going to make some new friends today. And when you're out and about, there, there are humans around you all the time. <laughs> And so if you just take a genuine interest in those humans and ask them all about themselves, then you're going to get the clues because you're gonna listen between the lines and then you'll see your opening. So whenever I am out and about, I am always looking for people to smile with, people to start conversations with. Sometimes people will start conversations with me. Ooh, that's a big hint that that's somebody who's personable and interested in other humans. Uh. And then the trick is, gang, what do we all like to talk about? ourselves, right? So if you meet somebody and you get them to talk all about themselves, not only will they feel more comfortable and they'll start to develop a rapport with you, but you'll also learn some great clues about them and figure out how you can work into the conversation, what it is you do and what you have to share. So for an example, last week, John, the kids and I were on a ski trip. And of course our business goes with us everywhere and there were a whole lot of humans there. So we met, we met lots and lots of people. And we were talking and asking questions of them. And if they are an interested human, they will eventually turn the tables and ask about you, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can tell them, well, I get to help women just like you start businesses of their very own at home around their kids or whatever the hell they just described their life looks like, right? right? And then here's the other thing. I immediately, if I'm not ready and I want to keep talking and find out more about them, I will turn the questions back to them. So tell me more about yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And then before we part ways, remember this. You want to get digits. I tell our team all the time, get digits. You want their phone number or their email or you want to hand over your phone with the Facebook app open and say, plug in yourself so I can friend you. You know, I think maybe you might want to look at what I do because you're complaining that you don't get to take vacations like this very often, but I help people create vacation funds. Wouldn't it be more fun if you could do this all the time like we do? <laughs> Bam! All right? So, so make new friends wherever you go. Don't be afraid to say the wrong thing. If you just are genuinely, authentically interested in others and connect the dots, you're going to get digits. That's brilliant. So I hear two people sharing a lot about asking questions. There's a lot more asking than telling going on, correct? Right. Lots of listening, um, being genuinely curious about people. Obviously, we're not you know, listening with an agenda, but just paying attention. Um, people do love to share about themselves if you're friendly and you're open. And if you can hear what problems are happening, maybe they don't have a lot of time for vacation. Obviously, that's a benefit you could stress about your opportunity that would capture that person's attention enough to perhaps at least be willing to meet with you or take a second look at what you're sharing. Brilliant. Um, you are just the queen of uh, <laughs> inviting Kimmy. And I, what I so admire about you is you are so transparent about what you do. And I, and I truly believe it's, it's somewhat of what Kimmy says, but it's also the energy and the belief that you have as you say it. So would you just share a little bit about how you would invite someone to take a look at your opportunity? Absolutely. So I concur with you guys about being authentic and getting out and really not even thinking about getting out to go recruit people or even uh, making friends is awesome, but with the intention of truly making friends. So I kind of look at it like network marketing is my second coat. It's just who I am. So when I'm out and about, I, people are attracted to the energy. And because I ask questions and it's fun and inviting. So I have a great example of um, just the other day flying here, actually. Uh, I was kind of trying to take a nap because I've been traveling a lot for business. And these two great guys sat next to me, a surgeon and a guy who had been awarded a Grammy for the, um, the Grammys. He got a, a medal for the Grammys. He was oh, wow. a jazz musician. And wow. we're just having, they were having a conversation. And all of a sudden, I heard them talking about health and wellness. And so I popped in and I said, oh, what are you guys? Are you guys interested in health and wellness? And they looked at me and they're like, totally, are you? And I said, yeah. And they go, oh, what do you do for work? And I said, well, I'm involved in network marketing. And then I actually pulled out 
the four-year career. So I love telling people that we're involved in network marketing because I, they're going to find out eventually. Now, you might call it direct sales. You might call it you know, um, uh, multi-level marketing. Um, but being honest and authentic right up front allows people, and sometimes I even do this. Because they go, oh, Amway, or you know, and I say, yeah, the pyramid thing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Richard got me. Richard got me comfortable with that. But you know what? It breaks through all of the things that are going on in their mind, and a lot of people don't even know what network marketing is. And sometimes we make up this crazy story that they don't like network marketing, but they're looking at us like I have no idea what she's talking about, and I don't want to look stupid. So yes. this book is such a great tool because it teaches people about our profession in a way yes. that's non-threatening and educating. And that's really my goal is to help educate people about our profession, regardless regardless if they join me or not. Brilliant. We're going to do, let's do an official plug for this book, shall we? Yeah. There's a casual mention of this book, but this deserves an official plug. Um, Kimmy is now Mrs. Richard Brooke, which is wonderful in and of itself, but Richard will be on later, and Richard really knows, needs no introduction. I'm sure you know who he is. But this is a truly brilliant prospecting book. Um, I love it because I feel it is the most honest, summary of what network marketing is about. It tells yeah. about all the good, the bad, and the straight ugly, up. straight up. You can give this to anybody. And um, it's really, I mean, I'm, I knew you were using this even before you and Richard connected. Yes. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful way to introduce people to this profession. If they really are serious enough to read the book, they'll certainly you know, be open to looking at your profession. There's another book I want to mention, too. Um, the Flip-Flop CEO is another wonderful book written by friends of ours, Janine Finney and Laurie Muirhead. And this is a beautiful book as well. Um, it's got a nice cover, as you can see, um, that is written a little bit more from a women's perspective. Um, and it's another brilliant tool you can use whenever you're connecting with people out and about. You can steer them to this book. And I know anyone who would actually sit down and read this would be um, enchanted, I think, with the idea of, of starting into a network marketing and direct selling company. So both of these are amazing tools. But again, what I, what I want to acknowledge about you is your transparency about this. and your willingness to be so authentic and honest. And also, there is, maybe we could just speak to that really quickly. There's a belief that you have that transcends all of that. Um, I don't know if you can comment on where that comes from, but I believe it's the energy people give off as they're communicating that affects people more than any words you can say. Mm -hmm. And I know you have so much belief about what you're doing, and I think that really is what impacts people. Well, I think that if all of us, we could raise the bar so much in our profession if we're willing to be honest about what we do instead of, I know some people teach to, you know, oh, don't say it right up front, wait till they get interested, wait till they get the sale, and then tell them what we do, and then people feel the bait and switch. And so, yes. you know, I'm, I just love our profession, and I don't want to cheat people out of the experience of looking, and, you know, I already had my whole intervention thing so it can't get worse than that <laughs> so um, you know if people don't like it and they they don't understand it that's okay but things like the flip-flop CEO and the four-year career are a tool that we can all help to educate people so that you know maybe a couple years from now or six months from now they say wow that was cool and she felt so confident sharing it with me this must be a pretty cool thing to do yes yeah <laughs> that I think that would you agree that speaks more than anything yeah. just her attitude and her belief yes thank you for sharing that Let's go to Sarah, um, because you, you're great at inviting, period, but I know you're also very skilled at inviting people to your local meetings, your opportunity meetings. Would you share your strategy with that for anybody out there who wants to get more people to your local meetings? Right. Sarah's got a great tip. So for, for live events, I think it's really important that we really teach our, the, the team to take ownership of the event. You know, it's not the person that's hosting the event. I mean, it, it's your event. Yes. So as you're inviting people to come to the event, it's, people are way more excited to, to meet someone than they are about the opportunity. And so we teach them really how to edify, properly edify the person that's hosting. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it could be someone that, you know, we, the edification purpose you know, is so important, you know, that whole process of doing that. Yes. And, you know, as I have an event, like every person I connect with, I let them know that I'm co-hosting an event. You know, and I really, I roll with the red carpet. I make them feel like it's a VIP event. Um, I let them know about limited seating. I let them know that, um, you know, I can't wait to introduce them to the person that's going to be there. And, um, and I let them know too, a lot of people, I'm like, you know, I, to me, like it doesn't really matter if, if you want to be part of the business, but I want you to meet this person because again, this person in w some facet is going to be able to enrich your life, right? Yes. You're going to be able to take away information that you can apply personally, professionally, whatever it may be. And, but again, I think 
when instead of it just being some event and people invite whenever yes. if you really take ownership like for me then i make sure that there's butts in the seats you know versus saying yes. oh well someone else might you know fill a lot of different seats i i take responsibility for that i think that's really important it helps you have skin in the game yes um yes. and uh just the live events just the more specific that you can be when you're inviting someone um, and the more special they can feel, because let's face it, we all like to feel special, right? Yes. And so um, I really like to roll the red carpet out for live events for people. Brilliant. And one thing that you just mentioned that I think is really important, if you're inviting someone to an event or even a webinar that someone in your company is hosting or, or any interaction really, if you can stress the value that's in that for them, Aside, like for aside from the chance mm -hmm. that they're going to learn about your business, most yeah. people are not going to drive across town and take time out of their busy schedules mm -hmm. to hear a pitch about mm -hmm. a company. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's part of what that event is, is in intended for. But um, if there's value there, if it's a networking opportunity, if it's a chance to just find out more about what people are doing in business, if it's a chance to learn how to make money outside of your current job, mm -hmm. would you agree? It's all about benefits. We're right. always stressing benefits. And if you can help people see whenever you invite them to anything, here's what's in it for you. Yeah. In addition to, you know, you'll yeah. find out about my products and business. Would you agree? That's Amen. what right. that's Absolutely. what will inspire people to actually say yes. Let's go to Michelle for a moment. Um, okay. Because you've had great, you're such a magic words queen too. You are, I love you are, you are, you are so great at benefits. Um, and I know you've invited people through LinkedIn and mm -hmm. had a fair amount of success. Could you share about that? And then I know there's a text that you've been using too that's working really well. So maybe we could cover both of those real quick. Yeah. Well, um, so with LinkedIn, again, you know, we, re I really was pretty intentional about the kind of woman that I wanted to. Um, enroll onto my team. So LinkedIn was a perfect, that was the perfect platform for me. Yeah. Um, and so when I invite people, I say, because it's, it's really important that you go, okay, what is important to them? And just as kind of a blanket thing, networking is important to the people that are on LinkedIn. Yes. They would yes. not be there if they didn't want to expand their network. And so I start with, hey, I'd love to connect with you instead of just virtually over a coffee. Love to know what's important to you, what causes you care about, you know, more about what you do. So I'm really, and, and I know the answer in general to that is yes. So I give them something they want to say yes to, they want to connect with me. And then I say, you know, I'd love to share more about what I do. And then I have an extension of that that is also very compelling about a global mission. Yes. So that that just may, I mean it's just I just kind of go back to I know what's important. To you. Even though it's a broad group of people that have very different interests, before I know them personally, mm -hmm. I can pretty be pretty sure that they want to do that. Yes. So you so. can hear there's a little bit of detective work, right? <laughs> it's either you're you're asking questions and listening and and hearing what people are sharing with you and surmising from that what's important to them. Or in a case like that, you're in LinkedIn, it's obvious everybody's there to network, so networking is important. You can almost make an educated guess that right. that would be a benefit you could stress that would get their attention. And I also say as an extension of that is I say, you know, I've built a pretty large network here locally and, you know, perhaps I could connect you with somebody in my network that brilliant. can help you. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. add, add value first, right? right. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. It's yeah. brilliant. And Randy, if we can bring up that slide, um, you also mentioned to me that you've been using texting as a way. Let's just keep that up for a moment, Text Randy. Text is the best. Yeah. <laughs> so share, share how you've used this and how it's working for you. So this is just an example of a text that, you know, it's, it, we put up something kind of generic. But what I want to stress about the text is really you're just looking to make the appointment and then you're going to sit down and connect with them. But the big thing about the text is people are doing it anyways. Go with the riverbed where the water is flow. Do what yes. people normally do right. so that it becomes easy. Because I think as we, you know, I'm sure you guys would probably agree, as we enroll new people, the, the hardest thing for them to do is invite. Mm. They're scared to death. And when I say to somebody, okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna text 20 people while I'm sitting here. Oh, wow. And and they do it. They, they will do it. I mean, we could sit there for two hours and they wouldn't call two, <laughs> but I can get them to call 20 and I can even play, I can even play a game with them and say, let's see how many you can text before somebody texts you back and says, okay, let's schedule it. Oh, wow. And that's it's fun. Fantastic. And that's a, that's a, a team member uh, taught, taught us that little game, but it's a fun game to play. And it works. I'm telling you, it will revolutionize. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. The business. So interesting. You're going where the energy is already going, which is texting. More people are probably texting than looking at email yeah. or answering mm -hmm. phone calls. So texting is just a smart tool. And also, it sounds like it's less scary for, especially There's, a new person, to send out a 
text versus call someone and try and speak with them live. Absolutely. Yeah. No resistance to that. Yeah, brilliant too. Mm -hmm. That's a million dollar tip, everybody. That's but great. If I can just jump in, I just yes. want to make sure everybody understands you can't have the full connection and conversation through text. Over text. No. text. Right. No. No, right? No, no, no. It's, to, it's yeah. what she said. Yeah. That's how you. Yes. That's how you book the appointment, and yes. then you talk live. Do not hide behind no. text. Or right, email right, people. right. Yeah, right. great point. Yeah. yeah, great point. <laughs> yes. Let's be clear. It's a great, great way to create an opportunity to Meeting. find out more about that person, ask questions, yeah. listen for an opening to share more about your business opportunity. Brilliant. And last but not least, how about Margie? You're a great inviter, I know. Um, and you do have a very detailed five-step process. We probably don't have time to go through that in detail, but is there a way you could summarize that in terms of how you invite? I will try to summarize this. <laughs> um, but I do Put have, you on the I spot. I do have an umbrella statement that I want to make first um, that I found has helped me so much. Whenever I feel um, intimidated in a situation, like I'm, I'm, I'm hanging back from doing what I want to do. It's always because I'm in my own head thinking about me. I'm stuck on my own agenda. I'm worried how I'll look. What the first, what, you know, what the outcome will be. Yes. And if we just when we notice that feeling go back to coming from a place of service which we particularly as women do so well it, it shifts the energy completely um, service and fun like just come from those places you're coming from fun right and and from just genuinely caring just like demystify this guys we're just people talking to people who all feel the same and have some of the same basic needs no matter what. And we've got something we think can add value. So go be Santa Claus, right? You're the Santa Claus. <laughs> you got the gift. And just change that posture to service. So, um, and then, yes, I love the invitation process. And I think there are some very specific words that if you just have at the back of the mind, your mind what you're going to say to keep it real and to keep it casual, then you'll have confidence because you'll know what you're going to say. I think also when you look at the whole recruiting process, recruiting is such a ma masculine word, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and you know, and yet it's where the rubber meets the road in our business. So the idea is, all you're doing is inviting. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is invite someone to take a look. Then you let the tool do the presenting. Right. Then you let your expert team leader um, person around you do the connecting of the dots and how are you feeling and where are you how, how's this landing where do you see yourself fitting in you let someone else do that you just invite all right now to the inviting yeah. process so I'm a believer of introducing both the business and the product or the service at the exact same time um, whatever you decide to lead with depending on the person you're talking to it's so much easier than trying to backdoor the business later so it might sound something like I'm super excited about this you know, having found this uh, um, great product, but also I want you to take a look at the business associated with it or take a look at this amazing brand, but check out the business behind the brand. So get both of them in the door right at the get go. And then immediately you take it to them, right? Because you've just now said something. Uh, I thought of you because, and then this is a genuine compliment where you say, I thought of you because you're just so outgoing. You're always out there. You care about healthy products. You got kids. You're looking to drop one of those jobs. You want to travel more. You're looking for more time with the kids. You're looking for less time with the kids. You know, whatever <laughs> it is. I, I thought of you because. And then the next state, the next statement is you're going to relieve the pressure because obviously you're going somewhere with this. So you're going to just simply say, you know what? It may be a fit. It may not be a fit. Either way is fine. And then I like coming back though with a little bit of an assumptive thing that says, however, if you see what I see, and then you just fill in the blank, we're gonna make a lot of money, we're gonna have a lot of fun, we're gonna help, help a lot of people, or maybe all three, right? And then probably the most important tip that I could give you, all, all of you know that the next place you go with that is if I, blah, 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 sh send you a link, whatever, will, will you or would you? So if I, would you? Um, and they'll usually say yes, and then the most important thing, this will save you countless hours of chasing people if you say, so I know after you review this material, you're going to have, because it has to be for their reasons, right? I know you're going to have a lot of great questions. I want to be sure we get them answered while they're fresh on your mind. So let's get our books out right now. You're busy. I'm busy. You have not set the link yet. You have not given them one piece of information and you're already scheduling the follow-up. Oh, it's so good. critical. And then, so you get the, okay, so 
this, what I'm going to shoot over to you is about 20 minutes. It's going to take you about 20 minutes to review it. So when can you get to that? Okay, great. So tonight, right? Let's look then at tomorrow morning. Does tomorrow morning work for you? You pin down the time and then you say, and guess what else? I have somebody I'll be introducing you when I call tomorrow that I can't wait for you to meet. Then tout their expertise a little bit, but also let them know the thing that you love about them is they're just so real. They're just so down to earth and real. So, uh, you know, and then that's it. That's wow. it. The Brilliant. inviting language in, Brilliant. in two minutes. That was, that was a, an hour-long training in four minutes or less. Thank you for that. Brilliant, though. I mean, what I hear so clearly, you're articulating the value. You're keeping it casual. Um, there's a nice balance between you're going to love this and it's okay if, if you're not if interested. You yeah. yeah. Um, and also, uh, just being able to book that appointment right in that moment before they even get any information is brilliant. So obviously if you can do that, um, and be really clear as to why, you'll probably- and for their reasons. Yeah, you'll probably you're have, have a questions. lot of questions. I wanna answer them while you're, they're fresh on your mind. Yeah, I, I don't wanna chase you down or you know spend a lot of time, we're both busy, let's just get this handled right now. I'm yeah. sure by just asking and pointing that out, it's a lot more likely someone's actually gonna say yes, brilliant. So there's again, so many different ways that we can do this. However, would you agree that at the very core of inviting is listening for one important thing, and I call it W-I-T-T, -T, what's important to them. Would you all agree with yes. that? Yes. Um, people do not join your team for your reasons. They don't join your team because of all the reasons that we think they will. They join your team for their reasons. And if we can listen for that and be very clear in articulating that, especially when you're asking someone to take a look, that's the first time they're making that connection. Um, you know, if we just hand them over a business and say, hey, come take a look, very few people will see any value in that. Sure. But through asking questions or listening or detecting, if we can tie in at least something we feel would be of value, um, people make the connection immediately and they're, you know, it's human nature, you're much more likely going to take a second look. So would you give them all an amazing round of applause, everybody? Thank you very much. I think we may have time for just one quick question off the chat. Well, I see one here from Melissa Domingo. Thank you, Melissa. And she's saying, I, have a, I had a great organization, but after a while, it has drastically declined. Well, what can a person do to restart and get the people that are in it for the long haul? Okay, so in terms of inviting and building a team, um, of course, no one here has ever had that happen to you. <laughs> All your people have stuck from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and I imagine that's probably as much about your own belief and motivation and mindset yes, as it is about the strategy. Would anyone like to comment, Margie? You've probably uh, yes. had that, seen that happen uh, more in this business than anything. What I think it comes down to is painting the vision again of what's possible. Yes. Because people move into action when they feel that their actions are aligned with something that's going to make their life better. When yes. it's connected to something that they really want. And if they pause, it's because they don't any longer believe that those actions are going to get them something that they deeply want. So it's painting yes. the vision again of what's possible. Yes. You know, reconnecting your own self and then helping them reconnect for themselves. Brilliant. Anybody else have a quick comment on that? Um, let's I'll go, go really quickly. Okay, we'll go to Kimmy um, and then Michelle. Also, it's asking yourself, are you in action and are you leading by example? So a lot of times we get our organization, it's all grown and big and then we become the manager and right. we stop moving ourselves. Right. And so the team right. sees that and they're like, oh, I'll do what she does. So, um, <laughs> you know, we all have to be in constant action and showing that we're still out there building and yes. on fire as well. Yes, yep. very true. Yes. Uh, just an extension of that, Lauren and I, who spoke on the panel earlier, were chatting last night, and I said, I think it's important that women know that there's always the opportunity, and I've done it many times, to start fresh. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, as, as the leader of, you know, whatever the size group it is, you really have that responsibility to start yourself fresh and go, okay, today I'm going to act as if I'm a brand new person, you know, and build the business in that way so that they see... Yes. Brilliant. So good. Real quick? Yes. Real so quick. I think, I think too, it's, it's all about understanding that your existing team is what your existing team is. And people always say, well, how do I motivate my team? And the best way that you do that is you don't motivate them. You create new stories in front of them. And a lot of times that re-engages them mm -hmm. to get excited again. They just, they see the excitement. And so you can't ever motivate your team. You just go out and create new stories of brand new people. Inspire brilliant. them. Yes, mm -hmm. brilliant. Well said. Okay, we'll probably have to leave it there. I wish we had more time. However, I hope that inspires all of you to get good at inviting. In my opinion, there's no more important skill than inviting. If there's a skill worth practicing and mastering, it's inviting. And just to be willing to do it, as you said, just open your mouth and share and let people respond in whatever way they're going to respond. 
And if any of you would like some help with that, that is um, a big part of the coaching program that I mentioned, the Heart Center Sponsoring Program. Um, during that program, which will kick off in March, we actually spend a great deal of time with you helping you craft some of those magic words, phrases. So if you're going to invite someone through Facebook, you've already got some ready-made phrases that you can take and use and try out. We've had great success with this. Um, if you'd like to uh, text someone and use some of the phrases in that place, or if you're networking live and you want to be able to go up and strike up a conversation, um, we'll take you through that process so that it just becomes second nature. And that is part of the Women of Influence package that I put together. I've mentioned that a few times today. And through that package, you will get all kinds of support to grow your team and build your business in the weeks to come. Um, I'm very excited about what we put together. It is a phenomenal deal. It is um, a lot of training for a huge discount, so I hope you'll check that out. And the most important reason to do that is we're donating a large portion of the profits of that, that bundle to Women United for Change today, which is an organization we're all behind that is helping women in developing countries transform their lives by building businesses of their own. So we have a very short video that will explain all the details related to that offer. Um, and then we're going to have a very quick break for lunch. But don't go away, because on the chat roll, we'll be giving away more prizes. We've got some iPads we're giving away and some training programs and all kinds of cool things. So for those of you watching at home, be sure that you stay tuned. And then we're going to come back. And joining me will be Dr. Josephine Gross and Chris Gross of Networking Times. And we've got a phenomenal segment on the power of women in business. You do not want to miss this. All right, so watch this video, and we will be right back. Thank you, everybody.